Boys from a school in South London improve their 3D awareness by looking at buildings, making paper shapes, and exploring the algebra of origami. Students from Woolwich Polytechnic School for Boys are looking at the Greater London Authority City Hall. It's part of a project to improve their 3D awareness. So here, they're looking at the shape and structure of buildings. What's so special about City Hall? I see a, a lopsided sphere pushed onto one side. I think because it, it's like a curved shape, the wind won't hit it like face on like maybe some of these buildings, so it might be structurally more sound. The reason it's got such a curved edge is to kind of avoid as much surface area from being hit from the sun. Well, on the building there's like the layers on them and I think it might be for shading, like if the sun was above. They move on to look at the iconic Gherkin building in the city of London. This is very, very good. We have um, equ equilateral triangles. Yeah. Also they form diamonds as well, so... None of it's curved glass, no, nothing except curved there's glass. only one piece of curved glass and that's, and that's at the top. top. All the rest, it, it, yeah. it's kind of, it's like almost an optical illusion. It. It's yeah. all just yeah. flat, normal glass. Each triangle feeds onto the triangle below it in the glass and the structure. If air can flow very, you know, nicely. Back at school, there's a tutorial about the trip with their maths teacher to challenge these higher attaining year nine students. You know, what were the important points that we've, you know, we've discovered and discussed? Uh, during that trip. Each building was constructed by various shapes and the shapes seemed to tessellate, so that was a big thing we would notice. What's the impact of the tessellation, the fact of using the same shape over and over and over again? You wouldn't have to manufacture an individual piece, in which case you'd have to manufacture an individual mould for each piece. Okay, so that was one big thing, the tessellation of the shape allowed us to be very cost effective and also because those shapes are not that big, they didn't use the diamond, they used the triangle. So when you make a um, skeleton around it, full of triangles, which is supposed to be the um, strongest simple shape. Obviously, you're making a very strong shape. What were the other important facts that we've seen about the gherkin? You can't see the top, or was it you could see the top? So you can't see the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You it's, it's a bit, yeah, yeah. Like, it, you don't feel like it dwarfs you. Right, and the fact that with the angle, you wouldn't see the top of the building, so yeah. exactly like you said, it wouldn't dwarf you. because it, yeah. you know, it bulges. One floor will have more triangles than the yeah. one below. Okay, so how do you do that, then? Um, well, you could change them in size, yeah, technically. Yeah, but then, if you, then your tessellation is lost, and your cost effectiveness is lost, isn't it? Yes, but if you, you could change, you, you could only create one mould for each layer, though, because if you just continue yeah, with it... Yeah, but 36 times one mould is not that cost-efficient, is it? Yeah. No. Well, We're so going off the point, I don't know what yes, you're saying. I think so. You should have um, a member of Year 9 on your... In the next part of the project, the Year 9s lead a Year 8 session on the properties of 3D shapes. How many edges are on a triangular prism? Nine. Nine. Vertices, how many vertices does it have? Eight. Six. The purpose of the exercise today is to create an enjoyment in mathematics, increase the 3D awareness, because a lot of boys don't have much 3D awareness and they're not really clear about edges, vertices, faces. And that's a triangular prism. One, two, three, four, five, six. How many edges? One, two, three, four, five, six. I believe that in our syllabus, sadly, we don't have that much space for 3D work. So it's very important to make sure they can imagine in their head, and that's a, that's a process that they need for any 3D work, really. We've got eight faces and we've got eight verses. 15, 10, boy, 10 is 5 plus 2 is 7. Some students begin to work out the connection between faces, vertices, and edges. Did anyone have time to find out the patterns between the the faces, the vertices, and the edges. Yes, the table. If you take the edges, if you take the vertices and take them away from the edges and then add two, you'll get the amount of faces. That is correct. Well done, guys. 
Okay, so we're going to make one of these, a dodecahedron. Now, this is all held together by itself. There's no gluing or tape involved in this. So the first thing you want to do is forge your Part of the point of holding exercise is obviously to obtain a dodecahedron. Straight down the center. But it's also for the boys to do something kinesthetic because that's something that we're, you know, we need to, I think in mathematics right now, you, a lot of mathematics is sometimes seen as textbooks, exercises, and they don't do things. Now take this corner, you want to fold it down, just like that. For a lot of boys, the kinesthetic aspects is very, very important. Whether you do locus outside or you do paper folding. So each table has to make 30 of these. And I just want you to remember that accuracy is key, otherwise it won't look like this, it will look like, well, not like this. How the hell? Like the Stick them together, yeah. You take this, and line them up. Push. Is it even accurate? Push it in there. Oh, that's it. <laughs> this one is cool. So we have this part. We lift up one of the sides, one of the folds, right? We had your nines taken out of the lessons to, in fact, teach the year eights. Keep going, you've got to push it all the way through. And then what should happen is it should lock. So you just like hold it like that and it shouldn't fall out. Basically. It builds their confidence really tremendously yeah. and their mass understanding sinks in. Try it from that side, it might be a bit easier. It does help you learn if you teach others, because if you teach others, it means you already have that knowledge. And it's just every time you teach others, it's kind of kind of kind of enforce that knowledge that you have and things like that. Well, it's a new thing. I mean, in school, the teachers do try to get us as, um, as involved as possible, but teaching is, yeah, it's a new thing. And then you do that. For the other boys, it really creates a good relationship because they see boys who are, you know, in their school, who've been through the same syllabus with the same teacher, who are able to grasp that concept. Now, the very important thing is that every single kind of, like, circle that you do, there will be a pentagon. And you're going to make another little pentagon here, and another little pentagon here, and another little pentagon here. Start so connecting that to this. This one's really bad. Who is asking you? <laughs> this. I threw that one in Dina. I'm trying to connect it. It's going to be easier if you're going to put it. I'm holding it. Who's going to do it? There's the last piece. There's the last piece. The last piece. I'm holding the last piece. Woo! Good for you, Jacob. No, that was not slot in there. That was slot there. I want to do it, I want to do it, I want to do it. Wait, 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 wait. We're not finished. Well, this part of the project is um, supposed to be about geometry and, you know, just, you know, mainly just having a fun reprieve and still learning at the same time. You know, that's, that's one of the important things to try and get away from so much the textbook and look at more unorthodox, more unorthodox, you know, means of teaching. You know, that's the main objective and I think we've achieved that rather well. You know, it can be frustrating as a teacher, but, you know, um, you know I do it for the kids. Finished! Yes! Uh, that looks a bit... What we're going to do today is a folding paper exercise. As part of the paper folding theme, maths teacher Alwyn McCollin is trying an activity about the intersection of two paper folds with his year 11s. The next thing I want you to do is to make a fold from right to bottom left. There was a lesson that involved finding the perfect thirds and how to prove it, whether geometrically or using straight line equations. So again, linking practical activities to more theoretical, if you want, math. What I need you to do is for you to tell me, if you take this square, how much of that square is that fold that you have, that you've done, that you've made? One third. But how can we prove that's a third? Work out the equations of the lines. Work out the equations. Brilliant. Now, how are we going to work out the equations of straight lines? That's, that's one square, so <coughs> that's, that's counting as one square. So the gradient of that line will be, um, wait, that would be one, because every one you go across, it goes up one. Brilliant. And then this one will be half. Well, no. It will be y plus x. That will be, that yeah, that one will be y, that one, that one will be gradient of minus one. Yeah. Why is it a gradient of minus one? It's very interesting because a lot of the stuff that's done within that um, practical exercise is not about isolating each topic area, but bringing all topic areas together and using them as a means to an end. They're not sitting there thinking, OK, today I'm doing on one particular topic. They're using a range of different topics in one session. Um, it's like getting them to, to appreciate, today I'm not doing maths, but I'm doing this particular exercise uh, is almost like if you have 
a carpenter using a, you know, measuring something. He's not thinking, well, today I'm doing measurement. He's just using it to do um, his particular job. And that's, the idea is to get him to understand that mass is a tool that, that we can use and not, it's not some abstract thing that we just um, use in the classroom. I want you to discuss right. it and then write out the equations of both straight lines. Write down the equations I'll give of you straight lines. <coughs> so this one's white. Five was... minutes, five minutes to do that. Is that? Oh, yeah, so it's... Wait, what's that? Yeah. And the other one's white, so it's two Which one? This, uh, this one here. Oh, yeah, mine. That one's that, and then that one's that. They interacted more with each other, discussed more things with each other, and you know, they thought more about what they were doing. So it's, it will be origin, That's the origin. So zero, zero. zero, zero. And then this line intercepts at the y-axis here. So this would be the y-axis and that would be the x-axis. And this line down the middle intercepts at one. So you put the plus one at the end of the thing. So by thinking about the equations of the folds, they begin one, to prove that they up, intersect a third of the right way across the paper. Thing. These two lines intercept at, um, at zero, they in, no, they intercept at 0 0.66, 0 0.33, don't they? What's the x coordinate? X coordinate is 0 0.33, and the other, and the other one is 0 0.66. The y coordinate is 0 0.66. They're working together to solve problems because that's what happens. That's what actually happens in reality. A lot of the problems aren't solved um, in isolation; they're solved together. Compare this. They move on to think about some generalizations. If I want to fold it into fifths. If you want to find a fifth, yeah. or a fifth you fold it four times, but then add one would give you the fifth. But really, it should be it's the number mm -hmm. minus one is what you fold, and then because right. of the gradient, you're adding. Right, so can you put that down there? Look. 1 minus x equals n plus minus 1 in brackets x. So if you just change the n to the number you want to find, then x will be the. Yeah. No, basically, no, x will be how much you have to go across to go up to this thing. Yeah, so number of faults. At the beginning, they would have never thought that folding paper had anything to do with mass. But by the end, that you know, connection is made. So what was the philosophy behind the whole project that involved visiting local buildings, discussing their design, making paper dodecahedrons, using students as mentors, and exploring the algebra of origami? We're realizing that instead of teaching them facts and how to apply them, what we need to understand is we need to make them understand. It's not about you know memorizing facts, it's about them having an understanding of mass. And if they've got an understanding of mass, then they would be able to, you know, see that number is, you know, is used in, in everything, that in, you can use algebra to do shape and so, so forth. So if they get a proper understanding, then, you know, at the end of the day, they would be much better mathematicians. Mm -hmm.